Hello and welcome to this session on Criterion Reference Test and Norm Reference Test. In the previous unit, we have gone through some of the criteria used for classifying tests into different types. We have learned the uses, features, advantages and limitations of some types of tests such as individual tests, group tests, oral tests, written tests, standardized tests, teacher made tests, speed tests and power tests. In this unit, we will examine two important types of tests namely criterion reference test or CRT and norm reference test or NRT. The terms criterion reference and norm reference were originally introduced by Robert Glaser in 1960s. What is a criterion reference test or CRT? Any test that is designed to measure the performance of students against a fixed set of criteria or learning standards is called a criterion reference test or CRT. These criteria or learning standards are predetermined. They indicate what the students are expected to know and be able to do at specific stages of their learning process. Such tests enable teachers to determine whether students have mastered a specific body of knowledge or set of skills. In a criterion reference test, the academic performance of students is evaluated on the basis of certain expected characteristics. That is to say, the level of performance is judged in relation to a well defined domain of content. An important thing to remember is that in criterion reference test, the performance of a student will not be compared with that of another student or group of students. This means if you are taking a criterion reference test, your classmates level of performance does not impact your performance is being evaluated. Though criterion reference tests are primarily used in classroom or educational setting, they are often carried out for other purposes as well. For example, driving tests and citizenship tests belong to this category. Imagine that you have decided to become the citizen of another country. Then you will have to appear for a test where you will be asked questions related to that country. Here, the aim of the test is not to see whether you performed better or scored more than another candidate, but to check if you have sufficient knowledge on the history and governance of the country. Likewise, in a driving test, your performance will be rated against a set of fixed standards. The aim of driving test is to see if you have sufficient knowledge so that you can be granted a driving license. In educational setting, a student will pass the test or be deemed proficient if she or he performs at or above the expected standards. Theoretically speaking, every student taking a criterion reference test could fail if they can't meet the expected standards and they can all pass if they meet the expected standards. Also, every student could earn the highest possible score if they answer all questions correctly. The format of criterion reference test can be multiple choice, open ended essay, true or false item, short answer or a combination of a question types. Such tests can be constructed by individual instructors and used in classrooms during specific courses or they can be constructed by a team of experts to be used across a state or district. In other words, criterion reference test can be high stakes tests where the results of the test may be used to make important decisions regarding students, educators or schools. They could also be low stakes tests where the results are used for measuring the achievement and academic progress of individual students. They are also used to identify learning problems or inform instructional adjustments. Have you heard of cutoff scores and performance standards in criterion reference tests? The score at or above which a student is deemed as passed or proficient is generally called cutoff score. In other words, a cutoff score is the minimum score students should obtain to pass the test. The decisions regarding cutoff scores are taken by either educational authorities in the case of 
high stakes tests or individual instructors in the case of low stakes test. Thus, cutoff scores are judgment calls taken by individuals or groups which may vary from one test to another. It is important here to note that the teachers or authorities who determine cutoff scores may choose to modify them by raising or lowering the minimum marks. The scores of criterion reference test can be expressed in specific achievement categories or broad achievement categories. The most common way is to express the scores as percentages. However, broad categories such as below basic, basic, proficient and advanced can also be used to express the scores. A third method is to report the scores on a numerical scale starting from 1 where the numbers on the scale represent different levels of achievement and proficiency. However, like cutoff scores, proficiency levels too are judgment calls taken by an individual teacher or a group of authorities. Therefore, they are subject to change and modification. We will study more of this when we look at different grading and rating methods. In India, individual teachers commonly use criterion reference test in classroom settings to evaluate students. Imagine that a history teacher wants to check his or her students knowledge on the struggle for independence. The teacher is required to set criteria for the test using which students can be evaluated. The major dates, names of important leaders, their role, major anti-British rewards etc. may be included as the criteria. Once the criteria is fixed, the teacher can construct a test based on them, set a cutoff score, administer the test and evaluate students accordingly. Now let us move to discuss the uses, advantages and limitations of criterion reference test. Following are uses of criterion reference test. In classroom instruction, teachers can use criterion reference test to monitor the performance of students in their day to day learning activities and progress. The effectiveness of a course, academic program or learning experience can be evaluated using criterion reference test. Pre-test and post-test help teachers to measure the learning progress made by students over the duration of the instructional period. They are used by different bodies of education to evaluate student performance and generate educational accountability information at the classroom, school district and state levels. Since criterion reference tests are constructed based on the curricula, the results of the test can be used to determine how much is being learned by students. It also provides a basis for knowing how well the educational system is meeting the expected goals and producing desired results. In the field of credentialing, they are used to choose the persons who are qualified to receive a license or certificate. They are also used to make decisions regarding promotion and eligibility. The results of criterion reference test can be helpful in identifying students who have learning gaps or academic deficits that need to be addressed. The academic achievements of students in a state can be measured through criterion reference test. This is usually done for the purpose of comparing the academic performance among schools and districts. Large scale criterion reference test can be used to measure the achievements of students in a given country. The results of such tests are typically used to compare the academic performance among nations. What are the advantages of criterion reference test? Compared to norm reference test, criterion reference tests are more effective to measure the learning progress of students. They provide educators with information which can be used to improve instructional methods. In criterion reference tests, there is no comparison between the relative performance of students. Instead, they measure the performance of students against a common and steadily applied set of criteria. Therefore, they are fairer, 
to students than norm reference tests. Open ended questions such as essay questions can be included in criterion reference tests. Test items that demand higher order intellectual skills, critical thinking, problem solving skills, reasoning skills, analysis, etc., on the part of students can also be included in this type of test. Criterion reference tests are not without limitations. Limitations of criterion reference tests are the following. The accuracy and fairness of the test is dependent on the learning standards upon which they are based. If the standards are vague, too difficult or too easy for the students, then the tests are likely to reflect these flawed standards. The process through which the cutoff scores and proficiency levels are determined can be highly subjective. This may lead to serious consequences, especially in high stakes tests where the results are used to make important decisions about students. The proficiency levels are determined in direct relation to cutoff scores. So, it is possible to manipulate the interpretation of results by raising or lowering the cutoff scores. Another type of test is norm reference test or NRT. Let us have a discussion on that. The term norm reference test refers to any type of standardized test designed to measure, compare and grade students in relation to one another. In norm reference test, the performance of a student is compared to that of a sample of similar students who have taken the same test previously. That is to say, norm reference test take into account whether a student performed better or worse than a hypothetical average student. This helps to distinguish between high and low achievers in a class or group. Do you know the test procedure in norm reference test? The first step is the construction of the test, which is normally done by an expert or a team of experts. Once the test is constructed, it is administered to a sample of students. The same administration and scoring procedures are used for all students in an attempt to make it standardized. The test scores obtained from this standardized sample are called norms. It is against this norm that the scores of other students are compared when they take the same test. The process of calculating the norm reference scores is called the norming process. The sample group of students against whom other test takers are compared is called the norm group. Experts who develop norm reference tests use a number of statistical methods to select norm groups, interpret raw scores and determine performance levels. After the test developers standardize the test, examiners can administer it to students. It should be noted that the students to whom the test is administered should have similar characteristics that of the norm group. It is important to choose a norm group that is most similar to the target students. For example, if the test was constructed using a group of 10th grade students, it is mandatory that the test should be administered to students of the same grade. Only then the comparison between norming group and test takers becomes possible, reliable and valid. Standardized norm reference test may use local, state or national norms as a base. The comparison of scores between a norm group and other groups of students gives valuable information on the relative standing of students. Also, instructors should be careful to choose up-to-date norms rather than using outdated norms. Using norm reference tests, educators can compare the performance of a student with his or her classmates or with the performance of students in general. Scoring and format of norm reference test is different from that of criterion reference test. Shall we move to that? The results of norm reference tests are typically expressed as a personal ranking. Let us take an example to understand this further. Deepthi, a 10th grade student took a norm reference test. She scores in the 17th percentile. This means that Deepthi performed as well or better than 70 percent of other test takers who are of the same grade level. This also means that 30 percent of students 
performed better than Deepti. As already mentioned, scores are interpreted by comparing a student's performance to the performance of other similar students on the test or to the norm of a standardization sample. This helps teachers determine a student's status in a group or the level of his or her performance with respect to the rest of the group. It is important to note that certain factors such as language, culture and differences in social and economic status between the student and the norm group are likely to impact the scores. Many norm reference tests often use a multiple choice format, open ended and short answer formats can also be used. They are usually not based on any locally determined standards or curricula, but are based on some form of national standards. IQ tests and developmental screening tests are also some of the familiar forms of norm reference tests which can be used to identify learning disabilities in young children. What are the uses of norm reference tests? They help teachers determine if young students are ready to enter preschool or kindergarten. These tests measure the oral language ability, visual motor skills and cognitive and social development of students. They can be useful in evaluating the basic reading, writing and math skills of students. The scores of the test can be used to measure academic progress, construct and design course assignments, determine the readiness for grade promotion and identify the need for additional academic support. Specific learning disabilities such as autism, dyslexia or non-verbal learning disability can be identified by comparing the performance of a student to the members of the norm group. In many foreign countries, a student's eligibility to avail special education services is determined through norm reference tests. The eligibility of students to enter an educational program or school or college can be determined using this type of test. In these cases, other information of the students is also taken into consideration along with their scores obtained in norm reference tests. Advantages of norm reference tests are the following. Norm reference tests are relatively less expensive to develop and easier to administer and score. They give information regarding student learning provided that the results are used along with other measures of performance. Since norm reference tests are usually developed by testing experts, the quality of the test is high. Moreover, such tests are piloted and revised before they are administered to students and hence they are more dependable and stable. As norm reference tests differentiate between high performers and low performers, they help teachers identify students who may require special assistance or training. They can be highly useful in some situations. For example, if there are only limited seats in an educational program or course, norm reference tests can be used as a transparent way to make decisions regarding admission. When all students are given the same test and only the highest scoring students are granted admission, the chances of favoritism and biases can be reduced to a considerable extent. Can you guess the limitations of norm reference tests? They are as follows. It is important to remember that norm reference tests cannot measure the academic achievement and learning progress of an entire group of students. For example, a teacher cannot determine the performance of his or her whole class and judge the overall effectiveness of instruction by conducting such a test. It, on the other hand, measures only the relative performance of individuals within a group. For this reason, criterion reference tests are preferred over norm reference tests for evaluating whole group performance. Some educational experts are of the opinion that norm reference tests can be harmful to the educational process. Since teachers know the materials that these tests measure, they may focus more on their students' chances of scoring well instead of focusing on the subject matter. This could have serious adverse effects on the quality of education. 
Moreover, educational experts are divided on the ethical appropriateness and educational usefulness of evaluating the individual learning of students in relation to other students. Now, it is time to analyze the differences between criterion reference test and norm reference test. Let us see what is there. One of the major differences between them lies in the purpose of the test itself. As already seen, the purpose of a norm reference test is to measure a student's achievement in comparison to others. A criterion reference test on the other hand aims to measure a student's mastery on a specific body of knowledge and specific skills. Here the performance of the student is referenced not to a norm group but a criterion. Another difference is based on what each test attempts to measure. Norm reference tests measure broad knowledge and skills that come from academic textbooks and syllabus. Criterion reference tests are useful in measuring narrow knowledge and skills taught in a curriculum or a unit of instruction. The questions in norm reference tests are constructed in such a way that they help to identify good performers and poor performers. The questions in criterion reference tests are usually designed so as to match the instructional objectives and outcomes which the students are expected to fulfill. Yet another difference between these two tests is based on how the scoring is done. In a norm reference test, the individual scores of students are compared with the scores of an appropriate norm group. In a criterion reference test, the scores of individual students are compared with the total possible score. The value judgment associated with each test is different. Let us consider an example to understand this. Imagine that three students namely A, B and C are asked to answer the question what is a norm reference test. Student A defines the test correctly in one sentence. Student B defines the test correctly and gives a few examples as well. Student C defines the test incorrectly. In a criterion reference test, the answers given by A and B are correct answers while the answer given by C is incorrect. However, in a norm reference test, the value judgment differs. For instance, we can make statements such as the answer given by A is worse than B but better than C or the answer given by B is better than A and C and so on. The scores of criterion reference tests provide educators with specific information on the level of performance of students with respect to instructional objectives. A norm reference test aims to classify and rank learners into various categories. Also, in criterion reference test, the scores of a student can be interpreted independent of the scores of other students. In norm reference test, the scores of a student can be interpreted only in comparison with others. Since the aim of norm reference test is individual comparison, those who construct the test give special emphasis to maximize the variability of test scores. But in criterion reference test, it is not the primary concern of a test developer to maximize the variability of test scores. Likewise, criterion reference tests are often developed by class teachers or individual instructors, but norm reference tests are designed and constructed by a group of experts. In conclusion, criterion reference tests and norm reference tests have limitations and advantages. Both these types are usually used in a classroom setting. Most of the tests used during format evaluation are criterion reference tests due to its descriptive nature. Using the test results, the teacher can make out what each student has learned and identify the learning errors which are to be corrected. Tests conducted for summative evaluation typically favors norm referenced interpretations. Some educational experts are of the opinion that though these two tests differ in their evaluation principles, methods and procedures, they need not be always seen as two mutually exclusive categories. They on the other hand are best viewed as the ends of a continuum so that 
we can benefit from the best features of each type. For example, norm reference tests can be made more descriptive making room for both norm referenced and criterion referenced interpretations. Likewise, norm referenced interpretations can be added to tests which are designed for criterion referenced interpretations. More and more people are adapting this dual interpretation method as a means not just to make use of the best features of both, but overcome the limitations of each type. Let us summarize the session. This unit deals with criterion reference tests and norm reference tests. A criterion reference test measures the performance of students against a fixed set of predetermined criteria or learning standards. This type of test help teachers to determine whether students have acquired mastery on a specific body of knowledge or set of skills. An important feature of criterion reference test is that the performance of a student is not compared with that of another student or group of students. This type of test can be used to make important decisions regarding students or schools. They can also be used inside the classroom to measure the performance of students and identify learning gaps. A norm reference test on the other hand measures the performance of students in relation to other students. The sample group of students against whom the test takers score is measured is called the norm group. This type of test is usually constructed by a team of education experts after conducting statistical sampling. Criterion reference test and norm reference test differ in their purposes, what they intend to measure and method of scoring. Each type has advantages and limitations which make them unsuitable to use for certain situations. However, recent trends suggest that they should not be seen as clear-cut dichotomy. Norm reference interpretations are added to criterion reference tests and vice versa so that we can benefit from the best features and also overcome the limitations of each type. Now you can try to answer the following questions. Define a criterion reference test. What type is driving test and citizenship test? Explain with examples. What is a cutoff mark? How is it determined? How can this course of criterion test be expressed? What are the advantages of criterion reference test? What are the limitations of criterion reference test? What is a norm reference test? Define a norm and a norm group. What are the uses of norm reference test? What are the advantages of norm reference test? Mention any three uses. What is the major criticism against norm reference test? Now, you may go through the reference books for further reading. Essentials of Examination System, Evaluation, Test and Measurement written by Agawal J.C. and published by Vigas Publishing House, New Delhi in the year 1997. A Guide to Teaching Practice written by Cohen L., Mannion L. and Morrison and published by Taylor and Francis in 2005. Foundations of Psychological Testing, A Practical Approach, written by Miller L.A., McIntyre S.A. and Lawler R.L. and published by Sage, California in 2011. New Approaches to Measurement and Evaluation, written by Sidhu K.S. and published by Sterling Publishers, New Delhi in the year 2005. Education and Mental Measurement, written by Singh Y.K. and published by APH Publishing, New Delhi in 2010. Thank you for watching this program. We can meet again with another topic. Take care.